Welcome to Psychics Anonymous. I am Spiritual Advisor Silver 13, but shh, that's anonymous. Welcome to Psychic Confessions number 11. Today, a medium confesses that she forgot. Let's get into her confession. About five years ago, I was still married to my first husband. He was the kind of man that makes being single feel like the only rational choice. We had a tumultuous marriage that didn't end well, and it was rocky the vast majority of the time that we were in it. Fifteen long years of an intense education in marriage. He cheated, was physically violent a few times, and he even stole from me. That was largely in part to his heavy use of drugs and alcohol. Needless to say, I'm glad I got out when I did. One of my biggest pet peeves with him was he gave awful gifts. They didn't come from the heart. They came from a place of convenience for him. So when our fourth son was turning eight and he said he got him a gift, I cringed. The day of our son's birthday party, he walks in and takes a chain out of his pocket and puts it around our son's neck. No box, no case, no bag, just here, I have you a necklace. With his track record, I wondered if he'd found it. That was until I found out otherwise. When I went to bed that night, I crossed over to the spiritual realm where a young boy about 13 years old or so was waiting for me. I met him in my childhood home that I grew up in. I was in the back room where the washer and dryer was when I heard a voice I have never heard before say, Look out the window. In the backyard, there were big trees and plenty of dirt. When I peered out, of, when I peered out at the tree, I began having a vision as if I was wide awake. That's when I saw him. A young male of Latin descent, he was about 5'7 and skinny with bright red hair and freckles all over both of his cheeks. He wore a flannel, long sleeve button-up shirt that looked an off-grayish color. The shirt was paired with dicky pants and flat tennis shoes, and he had a sparkly gold chain that adorned his neck. He casually walked down the street by himself at a regular pace. A slight smile on his fa- was on his face, and I can tell that it was his personality to just be a happy-go-lucky sort of kid. As I looked around, I saw that the community was heavily populated by dark-haired Hispanics, and they were and there were different kinds of Spanish shops up and down the street. It was a sunny day outside, and all seemed well, until I noticed that the spirit standing beside me was being followed right before he passed over. I counted four of them, all dressed so much alike their clothes looked like a uniform, dark blue button-up plaid shirts, dicky pants, and flat tennis shoes. When the spirit standing beside me noticed them, he picked up his pace a bit and began looking over his shoulders. The group walked faster and faster until they began running full on. The young redhead began running as fast as he could, all while being completely terrified. He led by a short distance until the crowd began quickly closing the gap between them. His heart pounded fast, his hands were sweaty, and the scent of no escape filled his nose. Papi, I wish you were here, he thought. Madre, I love you, he thought. With nowhere to go, my friend attempted to climb the closest tree to get to safety. It was hard for me to continue to look as I knew it didn't end well, because his spirit was now standing beside me. As he jumped in the tree, he made it halfway up, the first heavy branch when the back of his shirt was tugged with the intensity of hate. He fell in slow motion, and on his way down he told himself, protect your head, they're going to kick it. The flurry of punches and kicking ensued, and his beautiful gold chain was snatched off of his neck. When he hit the ground, he protected himself the best he could, but he was outnumbered, and outnumbered is outnumbered. I saw every hit and every emotion he experienced. Even when he thought to himself, this is it, I'm not going to make it. Tears now rolled down my face, and my heart was heavy with sorrow. After it ended, they ran off, and the newly dead spirit beside me was on the ground in a puddle of blood, not moving. At that moment, he turned to me in my childhood house that I grew up in, and he said, So that's what happened. Please, can you tell my mom what happened? She is very worried about me. I don't want her to worry anymore. Please, can you tell her I'm okay now? My name is Adelio Santinella. Please, can you tell my mom what happened, please? With fresh tears in my eyes, I said, yes, I will tell her everything. 
Aurelio then said, her phone number is 424-3795. Please call her and tell her, okay? Please don't forget. As Aurelio said, don't forget, my spirit began going back into my physical body because my physical body began waking up. I said, okay, I won't forget as my spirit traveled back to the home I currently inhabit. As I left, I could still hear Aurelio say, please tell her I'm okay and that I love her. Okay, please, please call her. Please tell her what happened. Please don't forget. Please don't forget. The more I began to reemerge with my body is the more that I forgot his mother's phone number. As hard as I tried, it faded as if I'd never even heard it. That's when I heard the front door of my house open. It was my ex-husband there to take the kids to school. I fought myself to sit up as I wanted to ask him about the necklace. When my eyes finally opened, they were headed towards the front door. I sat up and said, wait a minute. When my husband came over to me, I asked him, where did you get that necklace? He said he bought it. I said, from where, specifically? He said, from a guy on the streets. That's when I asked him if he knew that it was stolen. He said, no. I then turned, I then asked, I then asked him, do you even know where it came from? He stood, he stood silent as he had no idea. I took the necklace off of my son's neck and placed it in my, son, my husband's hand and told him he can't have this. My husband looked at me with a knowingly look and put the necklace in in his pocket. As hard as I tried, I could not remember Aurelio's mother's number to dial when I fully woke up. As persistent as he was, the number would just not stay with me and it hurt. I wanted to tell his mother everything that he had told me with all of the details, but I could not remember her number. He begged me not to forget and I did. That still bothers me to this day. The only thing that brings me comfort is that I know that his mother is not, she's meant to find out about her son in a different way and I know that there are no mistakes <laughs> so to all of the parents out there and to all of the mothers and the fathers who have lost a child and they do not know what happened to them or the details may be confusing or unknown I say this to you they wanted to tell you what happened to them they made an effort to do so and they probably still are doing so um, so if you don't know what happened to them and if you don't find out, it's not because of a lack of trying on their behalf. And to Aurelio, I just want to say that it was my pleasure to meet you and I am so sorry that I forgot your mother's number. This is my confession. <clears throat> okay guys, that's the end of Psychic Confession number 11. I hope that you all have enjoyed it. If you are in need of a psychic green or spiritual counseling, you can reach me at www.keen.com forward slash spiritual advisor silver 13 i am psychic synonymous 13 on instagram uh, <clears throat> excuse me guys and until next time everybody shh it's anonymous